Well, the scoreboard shows Ronnie O'Sullivan has taken the lead at the end of this opening session of this year's Champion of Champions final, but it's been the tightest of contests here this afternoon, and it's had the crowd on the edge of their seats. Just to show you how tight it has been, take a look at that. 88% pot success for both players, and look at the number of points. Nothing in it, nothing in it at all here. Beautifully poised as we look forward to this evening's conclusion of this final. Um, Alan stepped out the commentary box and uh, Neil with us as well. Um, you cannot pick a winner at this stage, could you, Alan? No, never been uh, more than a frame in, in it either way. Um, I think it's been what we expected. We've not seen the fireworks yet, the, the big hundred breaks, but the standard, for all there's been a lot of missing going on, the standards, when they actually get in, they're killing most frames in one visit. It's remarkable to look yeah. at those stats and see just how 88% pot success is both players, and they're both, you know, as, as, as Alan makes the point, they are scoring. It's a bit of an odd session, really, because um, if any amount of even number of frames would have been played, you can guarantee they've been level. But the fact there's an odd number, someone's got a lead, and, you know, you couldn't really separate them. It was a strange old session, oddly enough. All the scoring, there's a 60-plus break in, in every frame but the last. If that had been 25, 30 years ago, um, maybe the late 70s, we'd have been raving about the standard of that match, the break building. No centuries, but continuous breaks. But what we almost highlight more now is the significance of the odd shot missed. Who will, do you think, feel more comfortable at this stage? Or do you think they both just realise they're in a real arm wrestle? I think uh, that's a good description, an arm wrestle, that they're, you know, it's to and fro. Obviously, Ronnie, with a one-frame advantage... But as, as Neil says, someone's got to be in front. It's an odd number of frames. I always feel that when you play the first round at the Crucible. So 5-4 down, John won't be concerned. He'll want to you know, take it deep tonight, take it into the 7 each, 8 each. And from there, as I said earlier, I think John would, would have the upper hand. But Ronnie, you know, the danger is coming out later... If he fires for a couple of frames and opens up a two or three frame gap, then there's a worry. And that's the thing that Ronnie can do. He can change a he can change a match in an instant. Yeah, I think it's a question of whether daylight goes between the players, two or three frames, and that's where the winner's going to come. Right now, they're inseparable, and uh, you know John might come out and win the first frame or two tonight, and then it's anybody's once again. We've picked out one or two shots here. Uh, uh, inevitably, quite a few of them are yeah. mistakes. Well, I know, and we don't like to concentrate on errors, but as I say, the significance of the mistakes is more than anything, because when they're in, I mean, John missed this, misses this, and it was missed by a mile, as Stephen said in commentary. You know, he, he said, you've got to be kidding, and it was like that. Um, Ronnie started potting balls, but then, of course, he ends up missing... He missed a few blacks off the spot today, you know, inexplicably. Yeah, I was about to say that, Neil. I think we've seen more blacks off the spot missed in this match than the whole the rest of the tournament, and that's probably mm. true. Um, there was some nice stuff in it. That's a nice little shot, although he didn't play for the, the, the plant, did he? No, um, he didn't, and it kind of won him the frame in the end, again, with, with the scoring. He didn't make a century. He had a chance to. This was a nice shot. We've kept in. We knocked the other red out. But then we're not going to show you the next shot because he actually missed the black, but, of course, frame was one. And then, all of a sudden, this is where things go a bit pear-shaped, isn't it? Because he misses this. Mm. Uh, there's another one he actually misses soon after, uh, which we're also going to show you, but Ronnie didn't follow it up, you yeah, know, the, from that miss. The problem when these players of this standard miss blacks off the spot, it's a shock to the system, because they've is. probably not missed a black in about six weeks, two months. I mean, really. And here's, here it is again. Yeah, that's, well, that's, yeah, it's not a replay. It's the yep. same shot that he missed to the far jaw, and they get into your mind, don't mm -hmm. they, after a while? And Ronnie decelerated on this. Stephen got that bang on. Um, it was frame ball, uh, and in the end, he scrambled home in this frame, because here I thought that John Chip tried to chip that red onto the other red. Somehow he went around the back of it and stuck it, and, uh, of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan won the frame at that point. Yeah, he's actually a, a little unlucky. You could play that 100 times and not go around the back of the second red, but... That's the fine margins we talk about, and, and uh, Ronnie went ahead. And the last frame was even more uh, like that, more of the same, even worse. The highest break was in the 40s, no 60-plus break. Things, I thought once he potted this, he's going to win the frame, Ronnie, because that was a difficult green. And then the next two shots are you know, one of the reasons we love snooker, Alan, because they're, yeah. you know these great players miss balls they would usually get. The interesting thing is, if this is two each and he's got this brown, he'll pot it every time. Just the fact that it's the last frame of the session, going in, they've got three or you know two or three hours to think about things. There's a bit of tension there, but John just failed to you know capitalise. That's a tough shot when he's rolling it so slowly as that. And, and Stephen Hendry just reminded me it was a bit like the the final black that he missed against Mike Williams in the Masters final. Which, he had to roll it, which didn't roll off, by the way. Apparently, Stephen it didn't played. roll off. It was just a really poor shot.
Yeah. Well, listen, it was interesting seeing on, on social media Ali Carter, Judd Trump, Sean Murphy all saying how much they were looking forward to this final. You know, we talked about it before the match. It's the one that, never mind the fans wanted to see, it was the ones that snooker players mm. wanted to see. They'll be sitting there thinking, well, they are human after all. Yeah, it's not, but I'm encouraged. Um, <laughs> you know, at least I can maybe, I could maybe win a frame or two out there if I was playing the guys. But well, again, World Championship <laughs> semi finals, yeah, oh, I can win a frame here or there. Oh, shucks, I like to play a little bit of snooker sometimes when I'm not too busy. You can't play a bit, you know. Exactly. I know. Exactly. Well, no, but um, yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's good to see them missing a few balls. It really is. Um, we expected fireworks all day. I'm sure we'll get them tonight, mind you. They're, they're too good not to. Exactly.